Join us on the fearless pursuit of self-discovery and growth. This is Ivy Unleashed, a Gold Ivy production. Welcome back. You are listening to Ivy Unleashed here with Brooke Andrea. And we have a very special guest that I'm so excited to dive yes! into. She is a powerhouse personal trainer that we've been following and we cannot wait to pick her brain today. So excited. We have with us today a certified personal trainer, certified nutritionist, certified core conditioning specialist, lifestyle and weight management coach and the creator of healthy habit for life course so cat loyal welcome to ivy unleashed what is up you guys thank you so much for having me on i am just as excited as you guys are you are phenomenal and just thank you so much for taking the time yes oh we're so happy you're here and i love that you are in the best (laughs) environment outside and inside can you explain where you are in the world right now (laughs) Well, right now, I'm actually inside of my van because I do van life. I'm constantly traveling, and I absolutely love it because it just allows me to be, like, so relatable and honest with everyone that, you know what, it's a lifestyle. And I live it. I preach it. I lead by example. And right now, I'm actually in Arizona. It's not that bad. It's 70 degrees. I'm not going to die in the middle of this podcast (laughs) by uh, overheating. Have my fan. Have my AC on and it's just it's great van life is awesome that's awesome Uh, how long ago did you start that actually last year in may so we're gonna be hitting about a year yeah last year was a huge ordeal for everybody you know Mm -hmm. covid so for sure a lot of changes happened Ugh, everyone around me is just getting out and going somewhere warm (laughs) looking out the window it's just raining and gross so i'm trying to book a trip yeah where are you gonna go I'm going to Florida. Yeah. I got a trip booked already. Uh, well, we would love to dive in to your story, Kat. So share with us how you got so into taking care of your health. Yeah. All right. So it actually started about a decade ago. Um, when I was around 17 or 18 years of age, I was just really unhappy and just you know, overweight. And unfortunately, it stemmed from, you know, self hate and just being like, Oh, I just, if I was skinny and in shape, I'd just be so happy. And at that age, you know, you just, you just want to look a certain way, you aspire to look a certain way, you aspire to be a certain way. And I just fell in the wrong footsteps of starting my fitness journey out of self hate, and just not really having a core foundation. So I ended up losing a lot of weight. I lost about 20 pounds by being on an 800 calorie diet for like three months. I lost my period and my hair fell out. My nails got brittle and I knew that was not sustainable. So I ended up gaining the weight back. But in the fitness industry, it's a lot of ups and downs, meaning a lot of trial and error. So I eventually noticed that, hey, you know what? Maybe if I just ate healthy like that, that would probably be the best bet. And I got that down. And I ended up being a fitness trainer around the age of 19. And at that time, uh, when was that? Like 20, like 2001, I want to say. That was it. I was around 19. And that time itself, bodybuilding was in. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, we can all relate to that. Like, just aspiring to be a bodybuilder. And that was my prime. Like, I really wanted to do that. And I learned how to count macros. I learned how to just carb cycle and all of that. And that was my life. It was the gym. It was the aesthetic. And eventually, fast forward about five years later, uh, I was 25 and I ended up getting divorced. And that was really the breaking point for me to understand. Mind you, the divorce was not all my fault. Divorce takes two people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it was not all my fault. And um, I realized, I'm like, you know what? Like, my whole life was so centered around aesthetics and just being extreme, just taking it to the next level every single day, like nonstop, no days off in my business, in my personal life, in the aesthetics. So when I got divorced, I had to do the, like, deep, like, crucial, painful, uh, deep work about, you know what? Like, there's more to life. I need to find something that's sustainable, something that I can balance out and, and be happy, you know? Mm-hmm. So I've been through a lot with the fitness industry and I can see the, 
the ups and downs and the BS that's in the fitness industry. And that's what I really value talking about, making sure people don't walk in that footsteps. And what is that BS? There's a lot. (laughs) (laughs) Good thing we we have some time on the podcast to talk about it. But I, I would say, honestly, for anybody who's on Instagram, you know what I'm saying? Like, you guys see so many superficial things and not really tailoring and catering to yourself as an individual and asking yourself, what is worth it in my personal lifestyle? It's not about her. Not about the other chick that's famous on Instagram or the chick who's at the BBL, you know, and it's selling her booty program. It's not about that. It's about keeping centered within yourself and asking, what is it that I really want? You know, is it to run around with my kids and not feel winded after like chasing them for 30 seconds? You know what I'm saying? Like there's just so much to life in the fitness industry that we're not talking about on the non-aesthetic level. It's about being happy, being healthy in all components of health. That's really what it comes down to. Totally. It's that your why that isn't superficial, like you're saying. And it's hard when you are on social media and that's all you're seeing is, oh, I wish I looked like that. Or, oh, this is the next thing I need to try or do. And you're constantly just being bombarded by this perfect image that it's hard to not get Mm -hmm. lost in it. Yeah, and Kat, you're the perfect example of, I'm sure people saw you when you were cut Mm -hmm. and you were Mm -hmm. in the competitions and you were miserable from the extremism of it, you know? And so you're a perfect example of, like, if we take a good look at this well-rounded approach, we can be happier and fit in a way that ties to you deeper within and what what brings you joy in having more of that like balanced approach oh 100 percent. you know and i think that's just something that we don't talk enough about it's mostly people are just talking about like the no days off mentality or push through the pain or no one cares about like excuses or whatnot but i think if you look at things in the lifestyle aspect everybody does have a reason to perhaps take it down a notch that day. You know what I'm saying? It's, I think we need a transition to the movement of focusing on ourselves and prioritizing what we value instead of being told what we should value, which is the aesthetic purpose of fitness. So. Totally. And that's something that we preach day in and out is listen to your truth. There is no one yeah. size fits all when it comes to exercise. You know, it's, it's really about movement and figuring out what is going to make you feel good and whatever that looks like for you. So I'm curious, mm-hmm. Kat, how do you, when you're working with a client, how do you help people figure out what that is for them when they have this idea of what it should be? Yes. Now that's, an excellent question. I absolutely love it because I, I take the time in my one-on-one coaching approach. It's a lifestyle thing. So I ask them very sincere questions and very deep questions to find out where this is rooted from. And if they're the proper client for me too, because if they're like, you know, I just want to get shredded. Like you're not, we're not going to work together. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like I want to see what is the one change. For example, I work a lot with women. They're like, I just want to you know, I don't want to go to the doctor and the doctor tell me I'm going to die. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm tired of it. Like, I know I have to change it. Very psychological. So we really pinpoint that why and we start stacking on habits. We focus on something that's super, super easy and that gives them the momentum to see, hey, you know what? I got this. Like, I can add something else on, you know? So I have to do a lot of internal work in the very beginning and just Mostly it's starting off with anybody's why. And that why needs to be like the emotional aspect, not the physical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think thinking about the doctor and thinking about what exercise means for those numbers, you know, we we talk a lot about like it benefits your health and well-being, but we haven't really dove into the science behind exercise. I know we've kind of talked about that with you. Um, Can you elaborate kind of why this is so important on a scientific level and, and what exercise does for you? as far as, you know, your internal numbers and things like that? Yeah, of course. So I only work with women. Um, I used to work with men back in the day, and and it's just full round, full spectrum, male or female. We have to exercise. I mean, uh, it just helps all together in your aging process to make it not so bad in the sense of for women, osteoporosis, for example, we're very prone to that. And the only way that can really help bone density is by, building muscle, working out, 
every single day. And most importantly, the mental aspect of just having a clear mind and being able to show yourself that you can stay committed. So all around, it plays hand in hand. Exercise will help you physically feel better, your whole body, you know, effortlessly if you just for example start walking a lot of my clients who start off walking because they don't know what to do at a gym week two we tackle that but um they start to feel better which will force them to do more and then they can tackle on the nutritional aspect i love that i love thinking about like i think you can tie more to the personal why and then you know it there is something about taking care of your body in a way that like this will improve the health of your heart and we need our heart to function Mm -hmm. and it will improve your mental capacity to function and to be able to do your job or like you said, move with your kids or whatever it may be. I think, uh, kind of knowing the science behind it and knowing how important it is, you know, a doctor's going to say it, but what does that mean for you? So kind of tying it back to, okay, that could start with walking, right? Walking will benefit your cardiovascular health for sure. Yeah. And then you show yourself, I can do this. And hey, I feel, I feel good doing this. What else can I do? And it becomes that inner yeah. challenge. Exactly. Because uh, I think where a lot of trainers fail is that they give their client 20 different things to do in the beginning. It's like, after I, you know, ask them, hey, like, what is your actual goal? I take the time to really be like, you know what, this is the most important thing. So that way I know she has momentum to do more next week. And she sees the progress. She can do a little bit more on the third week and then a little bit more on the fourth week. I think um, sometimes trainers, they just put too much. Just because you get it as a trainer because you have 10 years experience doesn't mean someone who is 40 years old and has seen the fad diets up and down, you know what I'm saying, doesn't mean that they're going to get those fine things. Like you need to go back to the basics Mm -hmm. to help them understand the importance. Yeah. And I'm sure COVID has affected everything with your work and clients and doing it van life so virtually so so I'm curious how has COVID affected your clients and how you work with them yeah you know what I actually left a very very important part out in my intro I cannot believe I left this out (laughs) but I actually at the age of 20 or 21 I opened up a women's fitness studio so I have many, many years of experience of working one-on-one with people, um, and I see where there's a huge difference, which I'll answer your question just a little bit. I just want to build that momentum to to really say that I know the answer. Um, And then I opened up a much larger gym, and then COVID happened, Mm -hmm. and that's where I was like, you know what? Um, Everything was against me at that time. Like, the leases were going up and, and it was it was just a huge like political mess to say the very least and I decided to go online so having that experience hands-on for eight years with individuals I was like how am I going to do this how am I going to help more people how am I going to make this easy and effortless so what happened with the COVID thing is I mean a lot of people fell into depression and that was one of the main things that I noticed. I'm like, you know what, people they just need a light and just need to see that it can be done and you don't have to go to a gym. Like COVID turned everyone's life upside down from thinking that you need to go to a gym. That's the only way you can get fit. It's BS. It's absolute BS because this past year we've shown if you want to overcome it, it's gonna happen. So that being said, when it comes to the whole COVID aspect, it was about giving people easy tasks to just get them up Mm -hmm. because there were times where people were just in bed. I don't want to do anything. The world's going to end. I might die. You know, like everyone had those questions. So if you just kept it a very light task just to get them up, to commit to themselves, the way I say it is master the art of showing up for yourself. doesn't matter what it is. If set three goals in one day, Go walk, drink a gallon of water if you can, or half a gallon, and eat something that's healthy. If you can just do one for three days in a row, and then you add two for another three days in a row, then you sit to those three for a whole week, that's what gave people the light. Mm -hmm. Just having some structure is what gave them light. Uh, I like what you said, too, about showing up for yourself, because I think a lot of times people show up for themselves in certain places, but not at home. Yeah. You know, home a lot of times before COVID was a place to relax. It was mm-hmm. like you get home and you just sit on the couch. I mean, if you don't have kids and 
or you're older or younger or whatever, like you'd go home yeah. and you'd park it because like you've been running around all day and yeah. you went to work and then you finally get home, you eat your dinner and then you relax. And so to have that place yeah. be all of a sudden, oh, this is work. where I work out now. Yeah. And this is where right. I work. And, or now I'm unemployed and I'm depressed about it. And now I have to figure out how to work out too here. Like it's just, it's a lot. it is a lot. People's homes have yeah. become now a new place to show up for yourself in a different way than you never yeah. have before. Exactly. And I mean, one of the things I did, cause I also own an app. Um, so I have over like 200 women on my app and they get access to all my workouts and whatnot. And I've created challenges through that. I know the challenges really help because it's a habit based challenge and they were able to see the stepping stones to want to do more. And one other thing that I want to touch basis on is you're at home and you know, things have changed and if you just set a small goal, like I want to be able to do a push up, you know what I'm saying? You track that you only did a push up on your knees five times and then you track it seven days later and you're like, Hey, I can do eight this week. You know, that just builds the momentum. It seems so simple, but it's so effective to somebody who's just open and wants to change little, little consistent changes lead to huge results. So yeah. I think it's all about setting that realistic standard for yourself. Yeah, and your tagline is without extreme restriction. So I would yeah. love for you to dive into that and what that means for you. Yeah, it means it means a lot. Like I, I will definitely touch on my personal life aspect with it. Um because I how do I phrase this? I've always been really, really extreme, even as a kid. Um I mean, I, I was working three jobs in high school. I was like 16 working three jobs and I even graduated a year early like I I know how to put in the work and it stems from a very young age because I grew up in a dysfunctional family and that was the only way I could get out of the family was by working cons consistently and draining myself so that I could go to bed and not have to deal with my own personal issues and this stems from over what now like 12 13 years so a lot of that reflected into being able to control the way my physique looked. I knew how to put in the work. I knew how to be extreme and restrictive, and it showed in my physique. And when you're getting praised all the time and, you know, coaches are hitting you up like, hey, I want to put you on stage, this and that, you, you think you're kind of on top of the world. And once your personal alliance and all the, the ugliness and skeletons come out because you're forced to, to see it, that, that is when you realize that the extremism and the restriction was never worth it. It was from such an ugly place in my life that I don't want to deal with that. I'd rather learn how to adapt to situations like being around family gatherings or whatnot and just not have to worry about what am I eating. I just want to learn how to be more intuitive in tune with myself because for me, extremism and restriction just brings me back to an ugly part of my life. And I just don't want to deal with that. I did the work. I just want to do better. I want to work with it instead of war with it. And I just want to do every, every single day. I just want to do better. And I have to let go of extremism or restriction. And I see that a lot with a lot of women that I work. It stems from something deeper than the surface. That's so beautiful. I love that. And I wonder too, because I, you know, I think restriction and extremism is glorified on social media yeah. and mm -hmm. something that I'm wondering how you approach as a coach, because I have to approach this all the time. So does Brooke is, um, when people use exercise as a punishment for what they eat, when you hear that, how do you, oh. how do you address that conversation? Oh man, there's, cause I deal with the all the time you know what I'm saying it's just I feel like as women that's how exercise starts it's like we hate ourselves when you change something you know what I'm saying and once you let go of that idea of like it's not about what I ate yesterday it's not about how I want to look it's about how I want to feel you then venture out to exploring things that you genuinely like so it doesn't feel like a vicious cycle you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying like we see cardio buddies all the time um and you know chances are they they're probably in that mentality about like oh, I hate like crap now I need to go run seven miles and make up for what it is 
and they absolutely hate it. If you just ventured off doing something that you genuinely liked and took aesthetics out and took the food or burning calories out of the equation, you will be so much more consistent in the long run instead of going back and back in that vicious cycle of binge eating, then trying to burn it all off. If you just were consistent and happy in one point of your fitness journey, it will flourish into the other components that you're really lacking. So I always tell people, do something you love, something you're consistent with. For people who don't know what they love, how do you recommend Mm -hmm. they find that? Because a lot of clients are like, I hate exercise. Mm -hmm. Like I do it because I know that I know that it's going to help, but I hate it. Like any movement. (laughs) Yeah, no, no, that that's very true. Um, I do get that question a lot, but anything that just has piqued your interest, tiny little piece of interest, just go out and do it, but commit to it. Like say, you know, what, I'm going to commit to this for a week. And within that week, you'll have pretty good judgment. I would say more so two weeks, but let's just say two weeks. You'll have pretty good judgment about like, can I do this for a while? Like, is this consistent for myself? And if not, then jump to the other thing that has piqued your interest. And if you think about it, if you did that for two weeks, both of them, that's four weeks of exercise that you've been trying. And you're going to see that, whoa, I see a difference. Like, I feel better. I'm not loaded anymore. And that, just seeing that you had some pieces of results is what's going to actually pique your interest to want to do something in a committed level. So I say peak interest, do it, commit two weeks. And you trust me, you, you would, it will give you momentum to do. I promise. It's your answer. It, it speaks to something that we always talk about uh, coming out of a place of curiosity and also yeah. being intuitive. And when you approach it with curiosity and not guilt and shame, I have to do yeah. this. Like, no, I get to do this. What, what do I want to do? And yeah. it helps you become more intuitive of, okay, how did my body feel? How did this make me feel? Which is, I think exactly. it's a hard, it's a hard mindset shift. It's easy for you to say, well, right. Like, yeah, you should do that. So I'm yeah. curious, Kat, when you say, you know, you did the work and it sounds like that was the exact mindset shift that you had. What did that work look like for you? So the work was post-divorce for sure. I knew I had to do therapy. I don't think therapy, I don't know why it's a taboo to talk about it or whatnot. I mean, we talk about exercising, that's a form of therapy, not mm-hmm. mental necessarily, but I did the work in the mental aspects. I went to therapy for, I would say about eight months. I felt pretty good at the eight month mark. Um, I don't know why we didn't talk longer, but I know that COVID had something to do with it. So um, yeah, I had to really get down to the nitty gritty and a lot of these things like stem from my childhood because I acknowledge the fact that I was always extreme and, and um, long story short, my divorce ended. I never understood it until it happened to me about what people meant that we just, you know, we just grew apart. I never got that. I never understood it until it happened to me. And, and we were both very extreme. He was a successful business owner. So was I. And um, we just cared more about business. And that was what I had to talk to my therapist about. Like this, this crap, I'm so obsessed with, Um, you know, as Drew in my personal life, uh, it stands deep from my childhood. And and I had to do a lot of self-help. I had to, at that time, I I stayed away from men altogether. I knew myself well enough that I didn't want to fall into that trap of trying to sound a, a rebound or none of that. Like I focused so much on me and pinpointing what exactly was hindering my personal life. And I tackled it full on because that's one of my qualities is that I'm a doer. I will tackle it right away, but now I know how to balance it without it affecting my personal life in the sense of it takes control of every other aspect of my life. So yeah, therapy works. We agree. (laughs) I love my therapist so much. Yeah. It just shows to like that connection of being able to take care of yourself requires you to dig deep. And Mm -hmm. I think even, you know, exercise, when you hear that word, some people, it's like a block. They're like, ugh, you know, and it's just part of taking care of yourself. And sometimes we resist that. You know, I think, I think people are afraid to take care of themselves sometimes because what will that mean for me? But just to tie that mental piece back into fitness, uh, you have 
um, on your Instagram, you are the most valuable investment you'll ever make. And I love Mm -hmm. how you tie fitness into self-worth. So can you kind of, you know, elaborate on that and what that means for you? Yes. I absolutely love this question because one of the things that people really miss about, you know, the whole thing about fitness, there's so many components to it. It's not just about aesthetics, but the way that you hold yourself accountable, the way that you show up to yourself reflects in other aspects of your life. For example, I work a lot with mothers and I have a lot of mothers on my app. And when they message me on my app, they say, you know what? Like, you were so right. Like, um, just the ability to just commit to myself allows me to commit to my children more. Mm-hmm. Um, they see exactly what it is I'm doing and they want to follow. So when you're able to really hold yourself accountable in whatever way works best for you, it flourishes and it comes back 10 times more when you really show up for yourself. And it's just like as simple as that saying, you can't pour out of an empty cup. You have to commit to yourself. You have to show that you can put yourself first so you can give more to others because you can give now. You can give now even if you're drained, even if you're tired. You can give so much more and it will be so much more authentic and loving in every component of your life. Yeah. That oh was my so, beautiful. That so beautiful. <laughs> it, it reminds me of what Nikki, we had an acupuncturist, um, we recorded with her uh-huh. yesterday and we we're talking about mental health and exactly what you're saying. And she looked at me, she's like, you need to be selfish. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know yeah. how, but it, it goes exactly <laughs> to what you're saying. And what we preach all the time too, is you can't pour from an empty cup. You have to fill up your cup yeah. first. It doesn't make you selfish. You have to be able to replenish yourself to give back more, you know, cause you feel amazing when you give back, you mm-hmm. know, like just helping others that, that should be another form of replenishing yourself at the same time. You need to understand your boundaries and know when you can actually give more. Mm-hmm. That's huge. The hard cycle too with fitness is starting because <laughs> you're going to get more energy, the more active mm-hmm. you are, but it's just that starting. It's that like that first push because to start anything scary and it it takes a lot of effort and you don't always know exactly what you're going to do. So that's why having a trainer pays off. But um, how do you get people to just start or do they, are they already kind of started once they approach you? So they have done everything in the sense of what they mean by everything is they've tried every fad diet and we know how fad diets go. So when they come to me because they've been seeing my Instagram and you know, they see the amazing results that my app members have seen or have been getting or one on one. They already know what my approach is because I'm very honest and very blunt and upfront saying that you guys really need to focus on taking the, ba- the baby steps and the right steps. So usually people will come to me with an open mind um, and, and I just listen to them. I hear them out and I really do my best to see where the pain point is and where this is stemming from and how we can make this easy so that they can stay consistent in, in this whole entire process. You're like a therapist and trainer all in one. <laughs> Which is like yeah, a dream. A lot, right? People don't really know, but I mean, personal trainers, we actually, yeah, we, we do the work when it comes to that, you know, like yeah. we, we hear everybody out. That's just if you have a good trainer. I need to say that. You got a good one. They'll hear you out. And they'll see what it is that will help you gain the momentum so that you don't lose motivation. Because if I talk about motivation and how, you know, you can't rely on that one thing only because motivation goes out the door the third day. It's all about the proper steps, the baby steps that allow you to want to do more. Keyword want, not should. It's what you want because you've already seen some results. And you know what that good feeling feels like. And you just want more. You get addicted to it in a good way. When clients come to you and talk about motivation and how hard it is to stay consistent or if they fall off and to get back on, can you kind of speak to motivation? You said it goes out the door day three. What does that mean? Oh, yeah. Um, Motivation gets the ball rolling, but consistency and having a plan is what will keep you going, even on the days that you're like, you know, I just don't want to do anything. And this is why whenever a client has some issues, for example, life happens, I'll talk about one of my current clients right now. Um, We've been working together for about a week. 
And for anybody who's gone through this, the first week they're like, oh, I give up. You know what I'm saying? Like she ended up being accepted to her master's program and her family found out like they're a huge party. Her workout went out the window because her family had a surprise for her. And she was kind of like, oh, like, I hate to admit this. I'm like, I'm not going to give out her name, but I'm like, girl, like, no, like focus on the other three things. You know what I'm saying? Like you drink your half gallon of water today. You woke up early for a little 10 minute walk. Like that's great. Even though you didn't do the hour that you wanted to do, that's something, you know what I'm saying? So when people are motivated, they set a list, like a long list of things that, that will keep them motivated. It's like, no, I have to do these hundred things to be successful. Throw that out the window. It's not sustainable. Focus on three little major components and focus on trying to do two of them because life happens. Your kids are going to get sick. Um, You know, people get sick. Maybe you get called into work and you can't do your workout. Like we have to learn how to adapt and pivot and just um, like be more inspired by our effort than it is about having a long list of things that you need to do. So just show gratitude for your effort. And that just goes a long way. You can't, you can't rely on motivation. Like you just can't focus on the other components that you can keep in control of that day. I love that. And celebrate the small victories. celebrate what you accomplished and what you did focus on that, not what you didn't do. Because when you focus on more of what you did, then you're going to feel better and you're going to want to keep going. Whereas if you're like, yes, then it, that gets into the all or nothing mentality, I think. Oh, I know. And you know what? I, I love that you bring this up because I'm on the road all the time and my boyfriend's the one that drives, not me. So I just end up, you know, managing our social media accounts and whatnot. And I'm writing captions. And, and I was looking back at a photo of myself in my first studio that I ever owned. And, you know, I was super shredded and I'm looking in the mirror in my studio. And, and I reflect back now because I'm older and I've done the work. There was a period where I hated that period of my life. I said, now I look at it and I'm like, I have nothing but love for this girl now. The girl that, that, you know, life is chaotic when you're that young in your 20s and, and you just look back on it and you feel bad for that girl. But now I'm at the point where I love her because I had so much determination and whatnot. But if I could go back in time, I wish I would have celebrated my win. I was so eager to get to the next step. What's the next big thing? Screw what I just did. I can do better. I can do bigger. And I never took the time to show some gratitude of my small wins. And as I'm older, I'll tell you what, it gets hard to break that habit. So the sooner you accept it, the sooner you practice, you know, accepting your wins and celebrating it, the easier your life is going to feel, the better you're going to feel. And you can do that for others too, which is the most important. That's beautiful. (laughs) I love everything that you're saying. (laughs) I'm really curious about this app because I love everything you're saying, but I want to know more about this app and kind of what it entails besides the challenges. Yeah, of course. I mean, this app is actually what I designed right when COVID was going down, you know, and I knew that I had to pour my heart and soul into it. It was a new avenue for me to help so many more women than I have ever been able to do before because when I owned my gym, I was only including the 10 mile radius, you know, like I was capped off. And now that I'm online, I can help help an endless amount of women. And my app, I'm just, oh, I wish I could show you guys the reviews of the amazing, phenomenal results that these women get because this is eight years worth of experience. So I have my programs on my app. I have everything from gym workouts to no equipment needed the body flows to nutrition, which is what a lot of people don't offer on their app. I have meal plans for them or meal plan guidelines. I have a recipe book. Um, You name it, it's all in there. It's eight years worth of experience inside my app. And I just want to say, you guys, do your research. I dare you guys, do your research. Google me, like find everything out to know that's legit and see the before and afters. It's just a fun way to get in contact with so many women can directly contact me one-on-one I always respond and I just I just love knowing that I can help out so many more people and that's what my app has allowed me to do what's the name of the app 
My app is actually on Playbook, but in order to subscribe to my channel, I have um, my channel is just Cat Loya, but you have to download Playbook, and that link is inside of my Instagram bio. So you would get direct access and subscribe to my channel where you're going to receive all, all the workouts, meal plans, direct access to me one on one. So I host my workouts in my app on, on Playbook. Very cool. So cool. And your Instagram handle so people can find that? Yes. So my Instagram handle with all the transformations and where I want you to just literally go back to 2010 on my Instagram, scroll through everything so you guys know I'm legit. Um, that would be cat underscore loya underscore training. That is my training page in regards to lifestyle and just me talking about my life, trying to inspire people and, you know, um, just really help people understand lifestyle and get out there. And if you love van life stuff, that's my other handle, which is Catherine underscore Loya. So I have two different accounts. Perfect. And we'll link both of those in the show notes and on our socials for you guys yeah. too. Yes. I do have a question about your nutrition aspect because your approach is flexible and use it, not using exercise as a punishment for food like we talked yeah. about earlier. So what is your approach when it comes to nutrition? When it comes to nutrition, I just don't believe in extreme restriction. I believe in portion control. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are aware of food volume and whatnot, but I'm a big person of where I want to feel like I'm full. But I swap out certain food items for something that I can get more of. For example, like rice. You know, a lot of people love rice. I love rice, but I want to feel full. I'd rather have three cups of cauliflower versus one cup of rice because I like to eat. So I believe in portion control, food swaps, making the most obvious healthy decision possible. When you dial those things down, that's where my nutrition mindset comes in and we start tweaking things. So most importantly, it's just don't overly restrict. Don't trip about having a cookie just be in tune with yourself and be like, you know what, that cookie was good. Do I really want another one? Is this my emotion speaking or is this my hunger speaking? So check in with yourself. Big believer in checking in, portion control, food swap. I keep it simple. That's love so that. good. Is it my emotion or my hunger? Mm -hmm. Ooh, I'm going to ask myself that. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I love the idea of the swapping and just thinking of healthy alternatives because sometimes people just don't know, you know, they don't know yeah. about cauliflower rice, you know, and I like yeah. to eat a lot too. So I love that. Yeah. I, can't I, like yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to look at your app. I'm so excited. Well, oh, awesome. yeah. yeah. And I love everything that you're saying. I feel like this is such a great approach to food, to exercise, thinking about motivation, thinking about taking good care of yourself prioritizing yourself. I'm going to bring up so many good points, but um, any final thoughts that you were kind of wanting to talk about anything else that you feel like you want to let our listeners know? Yeah, definitely. I think um, personally, I would like to end my side of just really, really reaching out to every single person that's listening and really be in tune with the meaning behind this is master the art of showing up for yourself because for you, in a personal aspect it could mean anything it could mean the smallest little things of you telling someone you know what because you know they're toxic like hey I, I just can't hang out today or anything like that like just find ways to show up for yourself that aren't always in the physical aspect for example I mean let's just say that you didn't work out but you showed up for yourself in making healthy decisions you showed up for yourself in hydrating and those things you have to appreciate it. We need to learn to appreciate our efforts more. I think life altogether is so complicated where we have to do this, this, and this, and this. Why make our personal life and the way we feel about ourselves any worse? Like, just learn to appreciate your efforts because they, they will literally lead to huge results. Just continue to show up for yourself no matter what. It's that simple. <laughs> I love that. So good. <laughs> well, let's jump into our three gold stars. Okay, so number one, master the basics. Hydrate, sleep well, eat well, and repeat. Just keep moving. Repeat, repeat, repeat every single day. My second one is don't rely on the scale, okay? We have a tendency to rely on it all the time. Instead, have other means of progress, meaning measurement, 
old clothes that you can fit into, your clothes feeling looser, and most importantly, how you feel. If your goal is to run with your kids and you can run one minute more this time, focus on that positive. Let that be your momentum. And then my third gold star is probably the most important one. Let go of the perfectionist mindset. Let it go, okay? It's not going to make your life any easier. There's no such thing as being perfect. Instead, focus on what's sustainable and obtainable for that time period of your life because life comes in seasons. There's going to be some points where we can focus a little bit more on this aspect, and there's going to be times where we need to dial it down. So focus on what you can so good. Mm-hmm. So good. Love all three of those. <laughs> all right. Well, next segment is Unleashing Ivy. So these are our three rapid fire questions. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Number one, Kat. Favorite way to center yourself? To be honest, when I wake up in the morning, I just think about what can I do today in the sense of that's going to make the first part of my day feel so good to give myself that momentum for the rest of the day. So I think it starts the first thing in the morning to show some gratitude at your life um, and see what it is that you can impact. So just being able to help others. I take a lot of pride and happiness and responding to my clients and seeing everybody's progress. So just being able to, to focus on me first thing in the morning and then know that that's going to make me want to give 110% to my other clients is what helps me center myself. Just knowing that I'm making an impact. Beautiful. Next, when you're struggling to get motivated to move, what's one thing that steers you in a positive direction? Ooh, I love that question because I think a lot of people will definitely benefit from it. Um, I start off with something super simple. If I'm having a really crappy day and I just, you know, I'm just not feeling it or whatnot, I will force myself to do something small. And when I'm doing that movement, when I'm in that zone, I realize in the middle of it, you know what? I can push myself. I can do this more. I can, I can actually do it. So it's just about taking that first step, realizing, you know what? If I do something small, it's going to lead to something bigger. So let's figure this out. Let's just do it. Start small. Love it. All right. And last yeah, question. What's one thing you wish you would have known sooner? Oh man. Can we have another hour <laughs> for the podcast? <laughs> um, one of the things I wish I would have known sooner is a bikini body does not mean, I want to say the S word. I don't know how you guys take that, but you guys all know what I mean now. <laughs> okay. It doesn't mean anything unless you really focus on what's in here. Because at the end of the day, um, the way you talk to yourself, the way that you do things for yourself, if it's not stemming from something from the heart and it's only coming from the aesthetic purpose, it's kind of a setup for failure. I'm not saying that everybody's going to go through that, but the statistics are out there. It's pretty high. Okay. There's no denying it, but I just wish I would have focused more on true health than aesthetics. I wish I would have learned that way sooner than the way I did. Such an important message. Uh, everything you say is so much gold. We love that you're here, you inspire us all the time. And we're just so thankful that you took the time for us, for our listeners. And um, we always wrap up our show with a piece of gold, uh, which is a quote that can inspire audience. So do you have a piece of gold you'd like to share? Yes, it is actually, I titled my challenge this. It's called Be Resilient AF. And the reason why I love that is because everything in your life will teach you so much resiliency and you need to show that same level of resiliency in your other components of your life to just stay committed to yourself because you will have personal failures or downs and just stay resilient. It will pass. You just need to learn to stay resilient AF. This is Gold Ivy signing off. Listen to your truth and go chase your gold. (laughs) 